This is me, Dan Brown, taking the tiller of my narrowboat for the very first time and looking pretty worried about it. I'm happy to say though that I can now look back at three years on board and think about some wonderful friends I've made, some amazing experiences, incredible scenery, amazing wildlife and of course plenty of nice calm evenings in front of the fire. This is Dan's Narrowboat Life, three years afloat. Three years ago I was sat in an office in Great Hayward just about to put pen to paper and sign the documents that would officially make me a boat owner and officially start the era of Dan and Tilly. I'd just been down having one last tour of Tilly with the previous owner and we drove up to the office and on that drive up there I was as tense as I could possibly be. I was nervous, I was excited, I was having a million and one things pass through my mind of what if, what if this, what if that... And when it came to actually signing the documents, I was so tense that even holding the pen, I was really gripped on and my arm was really rigid. And my goodness me, if you could have told me then, Dan, don't worry, it'll all be fine. Three years time, you'll be loving it. And all of these what ifs will, some of them will have happened. But don't worry, you'll deal with it. It's all about taking it slow and one day at a time. It could be very easy to take a look at a tiny boat like Tilly with the incredibly small and basic interior and think, hang on a minute, this doesn't look like living the dream at all. But for me, boat life was never about buying a boat to sit down and never leave the place. It was all about what's through the windows. And what have we got through the windows today? Well, if we move across from the tree-lined canal, which is amazing itself, we'll find the absolute spectacular Blakemere, one of my favourite places to moor up. And as you're about to see, quite literally, only a couple of steps away from the stern of the boat. It's one of the things that I just love about being able to travel around such a beautiful area on a boat, being able to moor up and have places like this as your back garden. Without a shadow of a doubt it's always been about getting out to places like this and spending as much time in the general areas going to and from even simple things like visiting friends and going to work you can now make into a good hour-long bike ride through just this sort of environment for miles on end. I've decided to try and put this video together in one single day and the reason for that is that today is going to be a day that's got all sorts of elements from all sorts of different kinds of days mixed into it. For example, we're about to unmoor Tilly and do about a five mile boat trip in that direction. We'll see how far we get, we might go further, we might draw up a little bit shorter. Then later on this evening I'm going to hop on my bike and go up to my friend's house and really it's just that general mixture of real actual life that I live where it's not all about sitting on board, it's not all about constantly being on my bike and it's not all about constantly boating around. It's a mixture of well, being in different places, doing different things and trying to enjoy a well-rounded life of different activities. As we see me untie the ropes here, I'd like to leave the boat trip itself until a little bit later in this video and first talk a little bit about my experience of boat life over the past few years. One of the first things you may notice in this clip is just how much sunnier it is on board all of a sudden. But I promise you, this really is the same day as those earlier clips, and it almost serves to illustrate ideally just what I wanted to talk about in this section, and that is the huge range of boating experiences, general canal life experiences I've had over the last three years. If on one day over the course of a few hours, such as today, it can go from a drizzly, dull, overcast morning to an unbelievable sunny day like this where it's really hot and if you've got any naked flesh outside in the sun you can start to feel the heat on you and touching the side of the boat that's been in the sun is not something that I would advise doing for too long, if at all. Certainly not a day to go walk walking down the side of the boat in bare feet. Again, all experiences that I've had and learnt my lesson from. But 
then equally not only is it this amazing sunny day to look at from the inside when you're out there it's an unbelievably windy day now wind is one condition that I really do not like for boating because it obviously can play absolute havoc when you've got a 30 foot long metal tube basically having the wind battering against the side it's very easy in these videos for me to pan the camera around and show you all of this incredible scenery especially on a beautiful day like today's turned into and say oh yeah this is what I love oh yeah this is great let's walk up through these fields and cut through I don't know some sort of a shoulder high crop and try and find a pathway through it or hop on my bike and go down these lanes and there's going to be plenty of that happening in this video I'm sure but some of the best moments, and they are just that, moments of life and experiences that I've had while out on the canal or travelling to and from Tilly to friends' houses to work or wherever it may be, just walking for walking's sake a lot of the time, have always been from the unexpected appearances of nature and general wildlife. Whether that's a quick kingfisher flashing down past the boat or zipping up somewhere as you're just, I don't know, idly going about your daily life doing the washing up or so on. Or maybe on a boat trip such as today, and this is a clip from only a few hours ago, you get an amazing heron sighting like this. And these are extremely rare to catch quite this well on camera, but look at that, the huge size of the bird. And again, so many times I've seen herons and they've flown ahead a few hundred feet and then I catch them up again and then you get to see it again. But trying to catch things like that on camera very rarely works out. What we're about to see now is going back all the way to October 2012, only a few months into my boat life. And I was as passionate then as I am now about these sorts of moments. Here's a random boat life moment for you. Shh. So if we look through the windows, we've got not only this incredible countryside, but look who is stood right there. Like I say, shh. But then it gets better. When we move, have a peek through the back door. I can't open the door, otherwise it'll scare him off. But once again, what a view. But look, there's another heron just stalking up the river, uh, the canal side there. How good is this? <laughs> Absolutely amazing. It seems almost unbelievable that that happened nearly three years ago. And equally, I feel absolutely blessed to be able to be sat on board here still talking to you and absolutely loving all of these experiences with wildlife, nature and the environment in general. To have done this for three years is an absolute blessing and it's something that I can never be grateful enough for. But it's got to be said, it's definitely not always perfect and certainly not always perfect weather. I had my famous first winter afloat which saw the heaviest snowfall I've ever seen in my life either before or since and that was definitely a very steep learning curve where everything was constantly under two foot of snow and I was walking down the towpath and literally the snow was coming up to my thighs and there were so many experiences like that that were again unexpected to have that level of snowfall if any, any other weather condition could have been expected but snow was one that I didn't really expect in such quantity and certainly not as my first winter aboard but moving on from that there's also just things like the original autumn that I spent on board in fact probably around the time that that herring clip was taken soon after then we entered into an extremely wet period where just constantly every time I went in and out of uh, work or into my friends houses I'd be absolutely soaked and then fetching wet clothes back onto the boat and drying them over the fire and then there'd be condensation everywhere but that was all part of the early experiences and the fact that some of the worst weather that we had happened in my first winter and autumn and general early days of boat life really helped to steal me and get me ready for the next couple of years which 
as time's gone on and I just have accepted that there's certain things that are awkward and there's certain things that do make things difficult sometimes and I've had to think and learn how to best deal with them or avoid them or minimise the impact. For example, if you are mooring up somewhere in the middle of nowhere, not quite like where I am now because I'm not too far from a proper road, but if you're more in a place the, these sorts of rural places then you might want to do it in the summer and then over the winter months get somewhere a little closer to more tarmac access because it's all good fun and games to go down a muddy towpath on a bike and be slipping around everywhere and hoping beyond hope not to fall into the canal but when you get back to the boat and you've covered yourself in a load of mud and your bike's covered in mud and all your shoes and the mud's all got up somehow under your neck and under your chin sort of area, it's definitely not as much fun as it is on a day like today as I'm just about to bike out to my friend's house, which you'll be joining me for in just a second. And on a beautiful sunny day like this, you can't ask for more. And as I say so many times, it's what I absolutely love doing and I'm so glad that I've been able to put this video together on this particular day where you can see boating, you can see waking up at beautiful places, you can see actual places that we're mooring up now at the end of this little boat trip video we're going to input here and then obviously I'm about to bike off. But for now, I think we'll actually cut back and get to today's boat trip so I can give you a little taste of what the heart of the boating experience is. Right, time to get on that tiller. Here we go. You couldn't have a boat life video without a little bit of boating thrown in. Well, I suppose you could as there's many people who live in marinas and their boats haven't been out on the canal for years. So I take that back instantly. <laughs> but you'll notice that immediately I've got Tilly pulled to the side of the canal here because I managed to do a bit of perfect timing and turn up right at Ellesmere Tunnel just as there's a boat going into it but no hassle just let them come through and then tootle through myself I managed to actually do this successfully without doing too much devastation to the newly painted hull now heading into Ellesmere it's quite an interesting place really because it gets so incredibly busy and there's not really many places for miles around that get as busy as Ellesmere does and that's due to two reasons really. Firstly there's a town literally right on the canal and it's the only proper town on the canal for miles around that's got a supermarket and proper shops there that you can go and get a lot of stuff from. Here we nearly had a terrible incident Oh, the camera's going, but it rolls back. All's well, it ends well, I say. Um, but as you've seen here in just those few clips, there's loads of boats around here. And firstly, as I say, it's because you've got the shops and the convenience of travel and things like that. But also, as you're about to see, what the intention was in this first leg of the trip was to pull up at the services at Ellesmere where you've got toilet emptying, you've got water, rubbish disposal, and you can access them even off this bridge. If you walk up and over this bridge, you can get to the back entrance to the services. But obviously on a boat, we're not going to go on the road. So we're just going to head down here and then quickly nip around the corner here. But, like I say, you've got all of this basin area here, which it's quite a touristy place as well, Ellesmere, the town itself. So you get a lot of people who come and walk up and down the canal setting out from Ellesmere. You've got loads of boats here because there's a marina that we've just passed the entry to. To the left-hand side here, we've got the services, but as I turned up right on cue again, just like the tunnel, it was all full up, so I had to moor up on this right-hand side first and then cut back across. But as I was saying, you've got the town, you've got the services, you've got the marina with a higher boat fleet operating out of it. And then this is sort of the halfway mark between Langothlin, where you've got the Trevor Basin a few miles out with holiday boats. You've got Chirk with holiday boats. You've got Ellesmere with holiday boats. You've got Whitchurch with holiday boats. You've got Bettersfield with holiday boats. And so this is a place where quite a lot of traffic does pass through and it makes for an interesting time sometimes. Well, we managed to turn up here at rush hour, so not to waste an opportunity we've moored up just opposite the services where we actually want to be and I'm going to take this as a moment to literally nip maybe two minutes around the corner down to a shop grab a few supplies then get back on board and hopefully there'll be a little bit of room uh, emerged on the other side and we'll push Tilly across fingers crossed well we managed to make it across here 
pretty flawlessly, although that was almost entirely wind assisted, so I'll take that as a successful mooring. And the least said about what's going on here with the toilets, the better. Well, we've got toilet tanks on the floor, we've got supplies, and I think it's about time that we set off, as there's almost certainly going to be a queue and chaos going on here later on. Right, let's escape quick. As you can see, it got extremely windy as the day wore on and I got further away from Ellesmere. Although it did also get a lot more sunny, so it wasn't all bad. But I definitely found myself having to correct my steering a little bit more often than I'm used to. As I'd turn around a corner and the boat would get a little nudge from the wind and turn a bit further than I expected. Or, in the other extreme, I'd turn around a corner and the boat wouldn't turn quite as far as expected. So, in the end, I decided to moor up here rather than carry on a little bit to where Meistermin Marina is and have to pass a load of moored up boats and have the potential of boats coming towards me and just having the general effect of this sort of strong wind thrown in as well. I thought, you know what, we can moor up here and just enjoy a nice bit of peace for the evening and then later into the night, so why not? And again, you can see as we're moored here and that boat soon um, headed off after having their dinner or some sort of break, you can see just how windy it was and definitely something that made it an interesting time while I was on board, getting rocked around a little bit more than I'm used to while I was generally doing a bit of editing for this very video you're watching now and tidying up and so on. And after recording a bit of video and generally doing these things and having something for tea, I set out on my bike to head up to my friend's house. Again, you can see still just how windy it was and how it just got windy and stayed windy right on until probably around sort of between 10 and 11 at night. So you're seeing me head off down the towpath here. And when I talk about biking on the towpath, there's some stretches of the towpath that are lovely and smooth and what have you. Then there's also towpath like this, where because of the summer growth, you can't see exactly where the potholes are and just how bumpy it is. But you can see like the top of these wooden stakes to strengthen the embankment and stuff just sticking up. But what I love and what I talk about one of the great joys of boat life is spending so much time outdoors and just cutting down roads and finding random places like that pond just on the side of the road as I'm going down all these super rural areas. And this is me getting off the canal after rejoining it to go up to my friends' houses. Believe it or not, this is me leaving my friend's house. And this is exactly at that bridge we've just seen. Like I say, it was very dark and it gets extremely dark in these rural places because obviously there's no need to have street lights and so on. See here, we're looking across at the Lion Keys pub. Well, there's a disco going on in that room. Definitely a lesson I learned not to moor up too close to there over the weekends. And here we are getting back to Tilly. Again, extremely dark, trying to be as quiet as I possibly could. And ultimately, I hope succeeding and not disturbing the boats that were moored up around me. When I got back on board Tilly last night after the bike ride we've just been watching, I proceeded to sit down on the sofa here and past midnight talk for half an hour at the camera about boat life and my three years experience and what it's meant to me and all that sort of stuff. And I realised today, while I was editing this video right up until the point that this clip began, I, that I couldn't really put a 17 minute video together and then end it with a completely unfocused 30 minute long monologue and so I thought I'd re-record the ending to this video and try and sum up in a nutshell what I really want to share with you and I suppose we can take yesterday and the footage that I got of all the classic elements of boat life. I'd say it, yesterday wasn't really a typical day of boat life because I would be absolutely worn out and never able to even hold a camera straight if I was doing three hour boat trips and an hour and a half of bike riding and all of these different things day after day after day. But it sort of, yesterday summed up the general gist of the basic elements that go into making up boat life. So we had that three hour boat trip, we had the incredible scenery, we had the heron sighting. Then I moored up and had a nice bit of quiet time tinkering around with some of the videos that you've seen earlier in this uh, clip here. And of course, then I set out on my bike to go up to my friend's house. And that was an hour and a half of bike riding by the time I got back. And again, 
just having Tilly to base all of these actions and activities around. And this is before we even get into just generally walking down the towpath and climbing over stiles and following footpaths left, right and centre. It's all about what I said at the start of this video. It's not about what's in here. It's what's out through these windows. It's what's out there. It's where I can say, well, today I'm moored up at Wixall. It's going to be a 20 plus mile bike ride into my mum's house. It's going to be getting for a 30 mile bike ride out to my friend's house. Am I going to go there, sleep for the night and then come back in the morning? Am I going to move the boat up and then set out from there? Or should I just have a nice calm quiet day and then meet my friends another time and again it's the options and it's the experiences that having a mobile floating base to set out from gives you a perfect example of what I'm trying to talk about comes from a couple of weeks ago when I was trying to set out to Whitchurch before I had to turn around and take Tilly into the dry dock and all sorts of stuff was going on but there were a couple of days where I was at Ellesmere, I was at Bettersfield, I was at Wixall, I was halfway to Whitchurch, and I was setting out from these different areas to go to my friends that you've just seen me bike to and from. And it was getting on for an hour and a half to two hours of bike riding. And that is a huge amount of cycling to do. So, well, it depended on the weather, but because it was extremely hot over that period of time, it was very, very warm. And it made, even though it's beautiful to be out in these rural places, it made some of the longer trips extremely hard work as you could feel just how hot you were on your back and on your shoulders. And of course, when you know that you've got X amount of miles still left to go and you're going up, up and down hills and so on, it adds in certain elements that aren't always great and I've got to say that it's not all about this perfect weather being perfect or terrible weather being terrible sometimes it's nice to have a nice chilly day that you can wake up on and go right I'm just gonna walk out and enjoy a crisp morning other times you wake up you've got to go into work it's six o'clock it's pitch black there's ice on your bike seat and you think well you know what this isn't exactly how I envision narrowboat life but it's all part of what makes that well-rounded experience. And the other weeks when I was biking miles and miles to my friends' houses and had to wake up really early to bike miles into their house to then get a lift to a local town to go shopping with them and all of these experiences, again, can be completely turned on their head. If I was to boat for... I don't know how long it would take me, but a good few miles up that way, I could moor up just from the bridge where you saw me leaving the canal on my bike. And that's what I do over the winter and have a winter mooring spot just down in that area. And then for a few months to go to my friend's houses, all I have to do is walk 10 minutes up a hill. And that is exactly what I try and say with these videos. It's the boat, obviously Tilly and Tilly being so small and basic does affect the way that I live and how my boat life experience is. But what affects it and what affects my weeks and days and months and years far more than what's inside Tilly is where Tilly is and what's on the outside. Is it a 10 minute bike ride or, or a, well, yeah, a 10 minute bike ride as part of my work commute sometimes. Other times it takes me over an hour to get into town in the mornings before work. And equally, it's a 10 minute walk to my friend's house sometimes. It's a 10 minute walk, or maybe a 20 minute walk to another friend's house if I'm moored up in a different area. Then again, it might be so far away that it takes me so long that I think, oh, sorry, I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to get to you today. Otherwise, I'm literally going to be biking for almost four hours. And that's not always what I want to be doing. Now, I've been thinking a lot of how I can end this video. And one of the things that I always talk about is how walking and the canal and the outdoors and general places like Chirk, the poacher's pocket where I spend my winters, the Chirk aqueduct, Ponkasuffly aqueduct and all of these places have been iconic in my life for many years before I ever had an inkling that I would one day have a boat and be living at those places. And so I thought I would choose a little video I made about seven or eight years ago somewhere in that region and this sums up really my ridiculous sense of humour that's terrible, but also just how much being out on the canals and being out in the scenery and walking and just generally trying to enjoy the great outdoors and particularly doing that around the Chirk area where I spend my winters has been part of my life for a very long time. So on that note, I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. 
I will see you very soon in more videos, so please do subscribe. But for now, I'll leave you with a much younger version of myself. Hello there, I'm Dan Brown from invertedhourglass.com and here's a quick tip for those of you who find yourself getting a little bit bored when you're out on your country walks. I find it always helps with the boredom if you fetch one of your pets out for a walk, don't I Bertie? <laughs> and that's your tip of the day. Right, let's get off Bertie. If you enjoyed this video then please consider checking out my Narrowboat Kindle books available from Amazon by searching for the Narrowboat Lad or by finding all of the links in the video description below. Thank you very much, go on help out this boaty author. Until the next time keep it boat worthy and farewell.